Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining me today. My name is Jacob Estios, and I'm bringing you another School Bus of Tech networking video. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about network sizes, clients, and servers. I apologize. I was just recently trying to play with a, a new a new platform to hopefully get a better presentation for the network PowerPoint. So I apologize and hopefully at a later time I can be able to get that going for you guys. Um, so today I'm excited to talk about the network sizes and clients and servers for you guys. Um, there's a bunch of different things that are available for that. So let's go. Network sizes. Network sizes can be divided into sections that will provide efficient communication of devices that will connect to the network. And they're also able to be scaled depending on your growth. So especially these are really good for small businesses. So if they're really small, they can actually have a small network. And then as they continue to grow, it can become even larger for them as needed. The first type of networks on our list are small home networks. These are the most common because any home that has internet from a provider is in this type. Um, all those net and within that small home network is all the electronic devices that connect within that home or will connect at that time. So these are the most common across all, you know, wherever you go. They're the, the, the pretty most common ones is the home networks. Next you have your small office or home office or it can also be called a Soho network. Uh, what these networks do and what they have, they allow computers in the home or small office to connect to a corporate, uh, a corporate network. Um, some of these, uh, some, an example is like a teleworker or remote workers. They, they're involved in this type because the employees are working from home. They use company provided equipment for company access. And of course they have all the security and everything incorporated with that, but um, these ones allow you to work from home or wherever you, you know, your small office or anything like that. So th those are what a Soho network is involved. Next, you have your medium to large networks. Um, these networks are usually networks that have multiple locations and that they have to come through, they have to receive in in exchange information between one another depending on certain regulations that are being entailed. So schools or corporations um, with many interconnected computers are involved in this, uh, these type of networks. And so, like I said, you know, the medium to large networks are networks that are scattered throughout different geographical locations and then they all connect into one giant location for them so that they may have access to their needs. And then lastly is the worldwide network. The worldwide network is what connects everybody from across whatever country across the globe. Um, it's a great opportunity to have the internet within our homes and to be able to build and learn more about it as we continually grow because this, um, this worldwide network is what connects all of us from different people across the world, no matter what their language may be. And uh, it's a great opportunity to show points of views and um, great opportunities of service and other things across the globe with, with others. Next, we move on to clients. Now, clients, they are computer so computers with software that, that enable providing information to the devices. Um, one of the most common clients are web browsers. Uh, what the web browsers do, and we have got web browsers here such as Internet Safari, Firefox, Google Chrome, or Internet Explorer. What they do is they try, you type in what you're looking for, and then they'll try to find the top listing of where you can find that information, the most popular, the most, um, most common ones for that. Next, we have different server types. Now, with the server types, there's much uh, quite a few different types of them. You have the web servers, which runs server software. You have email servers, which runs email software. And then you have file servers, which stores corporate and user files in a central location. Um, some of the most common servers 
uh, are the file servers uh, because a lot of information that is within a corporation that can that is only to be shared amongst employees are usually stored with, stored within a file server so these ones tend to be a little bit of a larger type and a larger um, memory space because you know those files can add up and then you have your servers or the, the webs and the emails email softwares like some companies have within their device they also have um, you know email services between employees to get assistance in whatever jobs or whatever tasks they are doing through the day and then your web server is what gives you access to you know their information that's able to be given publicly so right here is an example of a client server um, these client servers will usually connect to a switcher router um, and then we can we'll be getting into that a little bit further a little bit later at a time but on the right side we have all our web servers and then on the left side we have all of, all the clients um, so all of our as you can see here on the left side computers all of our desktops they have client software on them so they can be considered as clients uh, they use they, they give us access to the different servers as needed and depending on whether they're able to be used for public so, or if they're used for corporations and within you know employment or anything like that they may have different things that are available for accessing and they may have limits to it, what you can and can't access inside or outside of work once you're outside of work you can be able to access whatever you need to and even our phones and some of our laptops and other devices that have access to the internet can be considered clients because they have accessibility to to be able to request information the last type of network that we have is called a peer-to-peer -peer network and generally what these networks do is they carry both goals of the client and server so you can have you know your desktop computer and the main hardware um, the brain of the modem and they can use both the server server and client they can be used as both roles as a matter of fact they can also be used as all all those shows so the web email and file shows so hopefully this uh, this was great to give you a little bit more information about the network sizes and and the clients and servers so um, for more details check definitely check out the the website I have it's got a little bit more in-depth writing um, if you like to you know check out the text it's in, in the description over here and if you know anybody that definitely could use a hand and wants to learn more about um, networking definitely share that with them share this with them and hopefully it can be beneficial for for everyone thank you and have a great night